I see a lot of uh, familiar faces in the audience. But, uh, so he, he um, uh, yeah, so basically, uh, HP Tech is a community event. Uh, we give uh, five companies uh, five minutes uh, to present about their uh, startup. Uh, and then there's a uh, five minute uh, QA session. Where, uh, so find out more about them, each other, and that's what they um, uh, And the idea here is sort of twofold to let uh, startups announce themselves to the community. And then also for the community to give uh, startups valuable feedback. Um, and then if any partnerships form, we have so much of that. Uh, we have uh, uh, four companies uh, presenting tonight. And uh, first up is uh, Alan from uh, 1000 Tools. Thanks, Dan. Hi, everybody. I'm Alan Mon. I'm the CEO and co founder of 1000 Tools. And I'm extremely happy to be here tonight to uh, tell your story. So you used to own a 1995 Ford Pro, and I loved tinkering with it. I come from a family of tinkerers, and we just love working on our stuff. But every time I worked on different parts of the car, I realized that I had <coughs> limited tools to do it. As I was talking to my brother, he likes to on Craigslist. That's his thing. And he's always finding that for each bike that he encounters needs different tools as well. He never has all the right tools. So I realized there's a common problem here. There's a need for tools on a short-term basis that is currently unmet. Your options currently are to buy the tool outright, but that's expensive, and you keep your tool in your garage for a long time until you use it again. Mm -hmm. You can go to Home Depot rentals or other rental establishments, but they have a limited selection of tools. They don't have all the tools that you need. And your third option is to borrow it from your friends. And that sounds great, except your friends also don't have all the tools that you need. And also, if you continuously borrow tools from your friends, they're going to stop being your friends. And that's not good. So I envisioned this great idea. I had this vision in my mind on how to solve this problem. It all just came to me in a dream. And the only caveat was I needed to learn how to code a web app. See, I'm a, by training, I'm a mechanical engineer. So I decided to study Ruby on Rails. And after six months, I emerged with an initial prototype that was functional, but it wasn't the solution that I dreamt about. And so I decided that if I really wanted to take this to the next level, I need to bring in the big guns. Enter Julian Vanier, CTO and Chief Hacker, and Brandon Blossom, UI designer extraordinaire. He keeps the site simple and very easy to use. Between the three of us, we put together a product that I'm extremely proud to present to you tonight. Welcome to 1000 Tools. 1000 Tools is a brand new website that allows people to rent tools to other people locally. At 1000 Tools, you'll find tools that are affordably priced, there's a wide selection of specialty tools, and if you rent tools from your friends, they're going to love you for, you, for that. <coughs> We've made a thousand tools super easy to use. You can post the tool, set a secure deposit to protect your tool, and you can rent tools, leave feedback, and ask questions to the community if you have uh, doubts about your project. So all our friends are using a thousand tools, but we decided that it was time to test our hypotheses and go out of the building, so to speak. So we headed out to the Detroit Maker Fair. We wanted to, to see if a bunch of makers actually cared about what we were doing. And I gotta say, the response was amazing. We had a thousand business cards taken off our hands. We had 200 people sign up on the spot. 80 tools were posted that week. I mean, we were just floored. So when we were driving back, from Detroit, we had a smile plastered on our face, I and mean, we were pretty happy with the event. Tired, but super happy. And so the, the question that we had was, is this the right time for a thousand tools? Are we ready to launch a company like this? And the answer to the question is absolutely yes. The world is ready for a thousand tools. In the past, there has been companies like Couchsurfing that allow people to share their couch to perfect strangers. This company has grown in popularity and they started in 1999. In the year 2008, Airbnb launched 
allowing you to rent your couch, to rent floor space, to rent a room in your house. And so more and more companies are allowing you to rent different aspects of your life. And we think that when people are looking the next time to rent something, for instance, tools, we want to be there to provide that service for them. So what is the ask for tonight? It's actually very low cost. All we ask from you is if you could just sign up and test out the website, see what you think, take it for a test write, you know, do a stress test. And if you have tools, please list them. We'd love to rent those tools. And if you don't have tools, ask your family or friends to list them so we can borrow them. Thank you very much. And now is the uh, five minutes uh, Q&A portion. Uh, if you can, uh, hit the little uh, zero one button on here uh, until the light turns red, and that'll make sure it goes through the uh, sound system. So we reset the, the timer. Yeah, go ahead. Sounds great if you have friends. How are you gonna make any money? That's a great question, and I wanted to be prepared uh, with an answer. So we charge a service fee per transaction. It's free to sign up and it's free to post the tool. Yeah, go ahead. Um, who is the liability if a defective tool hurts somebody? Also a really good question. Uh, I also have that one prepared. <laughs> uh, so what if my tool gets damaged, right? So there's a, there's a secure deposit to protect your tool. So if you would like to post the tool, um, you can set a security deposit and uh, the security deposit will be returned to you if something happened to it. And about liability, we currently provide some legal language in our terms of service that, um, that protects the, the whole transaction from liability. In the future, we will actually provide a generic contract so that the tool owners can um, be exempt from liability. Go ahead. What's your plan for growing into new areas outside of Detroit? That's, that's a good question. We have um, a, another answer for that, and that's the customer acquisition strategy. So the plan to grow into different areas is first doing it through uh, Craigslist, trying to see if there's interest in that area. And we need, to, we need at least um, 10 people posting tools to open, unlock that uh, region. Right now it's available in uh, Michigan, in Washington DC and Berkeley, just because there's been that much people in those places asking. Actually, uh, from the Maker Fair, we had uh, 15 guys from DC saying, or you open this or we'll come to your house and use it from Ann Arbor. So, <laughs> they were pretty much, so. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah. After you decide to rent the tool in a transaction, how does the actual pick up or drop off process work? So, when you, when you decide to rent the tool, uh, we handle all the payment online, and you can arrange uh, with the tool renter, if you're the owner, to come pick it up at your house or at a public location, much like Craigslist. Go ahead. So uh, renting tools is a little bit different than renting out your room and everything, and that a lot of people rent tools because they just want to be good neighbors. So do you have to charge a fee, or do you think a lot of people are just going to want to maybe give out tools and not make money off of it? Yeah, sure. Uh, there's, there's a lot of people on the site that decide to rent tools for zero dollars, and we welcome those people as well. Um, a lot of people that are doing that already, they don't need a thousand tools to rent tools to other people. They can just do it, um, you know, face to face. But this connects people that have a tool available with the person that actually is looking for that specific tool. But great question. Thanks. I have two questions. Sure. Um, how First do you, one, and then the second. <laughs> how do you acquire and store uh, your images, your tool images? So we have um, we use FileBigger.io, and people upload their own images. And if they don't have an image right there and there when they think about posting a tool, we allow them to uh, search for images on Google Image Search. And uh, how long until you accept Bitcoin? 
That's, uh, right now we're integrating PayPal, so that's the level of development that we're at. So once we integrate PayPal, we can talk. Let's, let's talk after this. I don't mind, actually. Go ahead. How are um, prices fixed? I mean, have a, does the customer, the person who wants to rent the tool, set the price? Or yeah. is there haggling kind of back and forth? Yeah, so I'm, I'm originally from Buenos Aires, Argentina. And haggling is how I buy things. And so um, we allow the tool owner to set the price, but we also allow the tool renter to suggest a price. And the tool owner can say, I don't accept that offer, or they say, okay, let's cut it in half and let's take you know, 50% of what you said. So it's totally up to the owner or renter. Go ahead. So how does that messaging take place? I mean, once I have the email address, I don't have to pay you a fee, right? I mean in your um, business model. Yeah, you could do that, but then the whole transaction will be done offline and you would need to give them a security deposit like cash and some people choose not to do that. Our email system, you can message them back and forth, um, but it's masked. So we, we don't mind if you go if you bypass us, of course we don't like it, but if you're up to do that, that's fine. Follow up question, what's your tech stack? What stack are you using? Oh, sure. Uh, so this is a Ruby on Rails app. Um, and we use Heroku <laughs> server and uh, PostgreSQL. Cool, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Second, uh, A2 Geeks. Uh, A2 Geeks is sort of a uh, maternal organization uh, here in Ann Arbor that uh, helps provide a framework for a lot of these other uh, small events to occur, like A2 Tech, uh, Ignite Ann Arbor, that sort of thing. Uh, okay, and so, uh, do you have the speaker? Okay, cool. Okay, so here, please uh, give your undivided attention to uh, Navila from uh, My Word Tech. Hi, my name is uh, Navila Jaffer, and um, this is the app. I'm gonna tell you about the app I developed mainly for my son. So it's like um, we experienced, uh, he's 16 years old now, and he has autism at age four. He was diagnosed with autism, and I'm sure all of you must have heard about autism. So um, I'm myself a software developer. I have programmed web apps, desktop apps, and then mainly because of him, I jumped into mobile app programming and I learned iPhone app programming, iOS, and I developed this uh, app for him. So this app, uh, it's a uh, assistive technology. Um, some of you might know it. Uh, it's like uh, people who cannot communicate uh, by themselves, they use devices, and those devices are the assistive technology. So it's a, it, it lets you convert the iPhone, iPad, or iPod into a communication device. And uh, also it can be used to learn new language. That was not the basic intention, but it just happened to be that it can be used for that. So the way it works is um, you can, uh, the caretaker can make their own dictionary or vocabulary for that individual, uh, for the person. Like we can create a list of things that our son likes to talk about and we can just uh, put it on his iPhone. Um, it's easy to add words and, I'm sorry. Uh, there's one more thing um, that's share words that uh, once you have your own list, then you can share with other people. And I'll talk about that later. First, I wanted to show you uh, recently on July 25th, um, Channel 7 News featured us. So I'm just going to pay. I'm just going to play this uh, two and a half minute video. Um. 
struggle to express themselves. And one local mom saw this in her son. So she took on the challenge to help him communicate. So that you use a quarter of Prakash shows you the app the mother created to give people a voice. Nabil Adopper has watched her son Salman struggle to communicate for years. He's 16 years old now, but was diagnosed with autism by age four. His receptive language is pretty good. It's more of his expressive thing. So all the time we're looking for some communication tool for him so that he can actually communicate to people because he would understand, but then he would get frustrated that nobody understands him. So the Zipsalani mother of five, who's also a computer programmer, noticed how much Salman loved playing games on his iPod. That inspired her to create an app called My Words. This gives kind of voice and speech to people who cannot talk themselves. It's a mobile device app that lets you create a multi-sensory dictionary, a compilation of words and sentences, kind of like personalized flashcards with a voice. In this case, it's Salman's father's voice. What's your name? My name is Salman. So it's really easy to add a word or a sentence. Let's say I want to add the word milk. All I have to do is type in the word milk, then I take a picture of it, then I decide what group I want that to go into. So in this case, I want to put it in the food group. Then I record my voice saying milk, and then it's all done. So if Salman wants milk, he can just tap on the picture and let his parents know that's what he wants to drink. Right now, there are hundreds of words and phrases of Salman's My Words app that have been recorded by his parents. If he's lost, he can pull it out his phone and say, my name is this, I'm this many years old, I'm autistic. But the jumpers say the My Words app is making a difference they can see and hear. Sometimes when he keeps listening to that word, he tries to say it to him. So it's, it's kind of like the speech therapy. The, the thing that we see most is the level of frustration uh, that has come down quite a bit um, as he sees that he can say and people can understand. Nabila believes the My Words app can do the same for people on different levels of the autism spectrum and anyone who needs help expressing themselves. It's hard for special kids to get a normal job, um, but if they can communicate, then there are so many opportunities. In Ypsilanti, a new Prakash, 7 Action News. That is brilliant. What did we do before these device devices? <laughs> 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 the Word app is $9.99 and available on iTunes. The app comes with a share words feature, which lets you share your child's vocabulary with teachers, friends, and caretakers. Yeah, we've got a link to it on our website, wxyz.com. I think it's actually life-changing for a lot yeah. of families. OK. So, it was nice that they made a very comprehensive video of showing how the app works. Um, it was so much for them to put in just two minutes. So they were not able to talk a lot about the share words feature. Then recently I have added, oh sorry. Okay, so that's fine. doctors prescribing this or have you talked to speech therapists or people like that to kind of get the word out? Yes, we are We are working with speech therapists. In fact, uh, we are working, we're trying to work with the Ann Arbor district, uh, school district, and other school district. That would be our next thing because our son goes to Ann Arbor school district, so we want him to use it first, then go to other districts. Yes, please. Uh, what, you say that you store everything on a server. Uh, is that a server associated with Apple, or is that your your own server, or is that some other uh, company that is providing the, the, the server for you? Uh, the app is an iTunes app store, so that's the Apple store. The app store, you can download it on iTunes. Uh, the server is the shareware feature that I wasn't able to talk much, and they were not able to uh, do that also. It's like what happens was, what happened was once I had the app, we had one vocabulary on our phone, and the teacher had another. So we were like, how can we transfer our vocabulary to the teacher? Like, whatever he did at home, how can we tell the teacher this is what he did? So now it's like I can upload, or anybody can upload all the words on the server, and the teacher can download on the device for the class. Because all the special classrooms, now they have an iPad, so she can download on iPad. So it's a good communication tool back and forth. Otherwise. He cannot tell us what happened in the school or what happened at home. Okay, so, so that's our own server. It's our website, mywordsapp.com. Okay, so you're not using iCloud or anything like no, that? No, I'm not using that. Yes, please. So I think that's a very noble thing why you did, and it's great, and I'm gr really glad I worked for your son. But have you thought or, you know, 
explore the opportunity that instead of stimulating someone, some other child with autism, it might actually kind of encourage them to, you know, not try to learn the language by using this application. Uh, you mean if they use the app, they won't uh, not be able to talk? Is that what you mean? Yeah, you know, we have, hard enough. Right. We had this thing, and we struggled with this thing a lot, and we did not want him to use all these communication devices because we thought the same thing. But now that he keeps on listening to that word, it's easier for him to actually say it because autism and special kids, they need over and over the same thing. And he would just point at the letter and he would want me to say the word that starts with that. And obviously everybody gets exhausted. So with the device, he can just keep tapping it and it keeps saying it for him. So that actually helps. It's the other way around. We thought the same what you think. Yes, please. How have your sales been? How have your sales been? How have your sales been? I've been salesman. Um, initially, two years ago, um, Initially, we put it for free, but now, like a uh, couple of months ago, when we have the share words thing, so it's not free, and um, it was for ten dollars off and on. Like we do it fifty percent off, so it's it's going slow, but uh, people are downloading. You know, I mean, we are okay with the thing that it's going slow because people are testing and giving us feedback, and we are continuously updating, and our son is using. That's great. Yes, please. What's next? Um, that's a very good next question. Um, I think what I'm hoping, like when the school year starts, he will be using it in the school. And that would be something that once he uses more with the classroom teacher, then we'll just get more ideas how can we improve it. Yes. Have you thought about using the pictures that are taken uh, to help make schedules? Because I know that's one thing that helps out a lot, like the morning schedule, a lot of times you put a, like a little like, picture or something next to the task. Right, right. Um, it's so nice that, uh, you know, with this I iPhone, these devices, they're so easy to use. Uh, Salman, the son, what he does is, uh, <coughs> recently we were teaching him, okay, when you talk about when, like, like the schedule we talked about. So he taught him how to look at the calendar. So now he's learning iCalendar with the app. So it's it's good that it's like he's building on those things. So that's that's a good thing. Yes. Uh, is, it, is it your full time job to make this app, or are you like a developer? So on I'm the a side? developer. I'm, uh, so you sort of make it on the side. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I I have my own business, and it was in the first. Uh, uh, it's only seven seconds left from looking at this. <laughs> um, uh, we have our business, Jefferson Computers has been there for almost 10 years, and Jefferson Software is there for like three years. But on the side, I have been doing programming. <laughs> okay, thank Thanks you. Again. Yeah, we're pretty sorry. He's uh, getting set up. I want to uh, open up the floor to uh, community announcements. Uh, I have a ton of them, so I have to break them in two parts. But really, anything pertaining to entrepreneurship is uh, acceptable. Uh, job openings, upcoming entrepreneurial events, that sort of thing. Community announcements, anyone? Yes. Uh, I'm with Alert Watch. Uh, we're looking for a developer with uh, hospital slash healthcare experience. That's it. Yeah, way in the back. I work at Jawbone out in San Francisco, and we are working in the wearable space, looking for good data engineers, good data scientists, good software engineers. So if you're interested in that space, talk to me afterwards. Do you have an Ann Arbor office? We don't. I'd love to open one. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite. Yes. Um, I work for Merit Network. Uh, Eric Ann Arbor, and we're looking for a sales director. I'm with Exceed Consulting. I'm here with my colleague who's in HR, and we're looking for developers and Salesforce consultants. What company? Exceed Consulting. Uh, I work for OLAC with Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Plant. Plant. Uh, yeah, and uh, we are looking for both DevOps engineers and um, front end leaning full stack engineers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> um, we, uh, the, I just looked and the jobs are not actually posted on our website yet, but they will soon be on olark.com slash jobs. So if you're interested and you are, you should go there. Awesome. I have a Hassan from the MLive Media Group, the largest news website in Michigan, and we are looking for developers as well as product people, so a combination of user experience and business side. So open to any possibilities there. Cool. If you want to what we do the next uh, set of um, I'm Jenna, I work for Canon Chemical, a local biochemical research company with an awesome IT team that I'm a part of. Um, we have a digital marketing coordinator opening, so Google Analytics, email, all that kind of stuff, social media, um, if anyone's interested in that. Okay, and then we'll pick up your emails once again uh, after this uh, presentation and take you in. So please take it away. That was good. Hello everyone, my name is Brad Clark and I am co-founder and chief marketing officer of Silith.io, a Michigan-based tech company. And I'm here on behalf of our first product, Annotree, a new collaborative platform for application development bringing together designers, developers, testers, and managers under one simple, intuitive platform. Now before I tell you guys about what exactly our product does, I want to tell you guys a brief story about music. So when I'm not working on our next viral marketing campaign, uh, I like to take a little bit of a break and actually do music on an interface that looks something like this. It's a bit different than the compiler some of you engineers might see, but it's kind of uh, it's what I can do for, uh, for fun. So. Um, and whenever I tell people I've been doing music for the last three or four years, they usually ask me, you know, What's, uh, what's the most exciting thing you've done that, that's really kept you going since you've been doing music? You know, is it when you finally got some Skrillex dubstep going on or some filthy drop after a sick bass or a nice infectious melody? And to those, I usually say no, because oddly enough, the most exciting thing actually came in the form of a text message at about 2 o'clock in the morning. So one of my buddies sent me a text and said, dude, I heard one of your tracks on SoundCloud and I would love to put some vocals on it. And I was like, well, I can't sing, so, you know, by all means, knock yourself out. So he went out in the garage laid some tracks down, sent them my way. Downloaded them from my email address and I dropped them in and I hit the play button. I kind of sat back and I don't want to use the word magical because I think that's kind of cliche and overplayed, but I can tell you without a doubt the most exciting thing I've done with music was the second that I could hear his individual interpretation vocally of a track that I had made in Fruity Loops together as one end product. Now you may call that creating a song and that's, that, you're right, that is what it is, but what, what I call it is collaboration. It's to bring it together of two separate ideas for one end product. And through SoundCloud and through music, my friend and I were able to connect, share ideas, and collaborate on this project. But you take a look at mobile development, and there is no clear solution for bringing together everyone who can work on the mobile development process, be it managers, developers, designers, or testers, into one location when each of these people have their own specific platforms that they prefer to use. Now this is a problem, but it is not a problem without a solution. And the solution is Annotree, which, as I said, is a new collaborative platform for mobile development, bringing all these guys together uh, in one happy place. So how does it work? Through one line of code, you can install, you can install our SDK directly into your web or mobile application. Uh, once you've done that, you instantly have access to begin marking up directly on application, uh, indicating design changes, bug fixes, what have you. Uh, now, once you're satisfied with this, you can uh, name it and then send it off to our collaboration platform, which is where we like to say the magic happens. So once you log in, you'll see this menu screen right here. Each tree is going to represent an application you're currently developing. And when you click on your tree, you will see all of your leafs or annotations that have been sent directly from your device or your web application. From there, if you boil down one level further, you'll be able to see the actual annotation that was sent from your device, comments that have been written on it. You can also write comments, add new images to an existing uh, annotation to kind of reinforce conversation, and then add users to the actual tree or application uh, to work in with your uh, development workflow. So what's one of the big draws of this thing? It works on every device. So your entire team, regardless of their specific skill sets, you know, they might not know how to move text from place A to place B or you know, change the color from blue to red, but they can whip out their iPad and they can start drawing circles, drawing lines, and they can indicate these changes, send it off to the collaboration platform, bring in the users who know how to make this happen, and then they can execute. So people often ask us, what's next? What are you guys looking for and able to take Annotree and take it to the next level? And in the case that we have all these developers in the audience, the answer would be you. We're looking for those early adopters, the indie iOS developer, or the small app development studio with less red tape in the way of implementing new innovative software. We are looking for the users who are willing to go out on a limb and take a chance with a new company. We invite you to take a new experience. We want you guys to come along with Annotree and help us develop this platform. So where are we right now? 
Currently, we are in a private beta phase with a limited amount, with a small limited amount of users, giving us very qualitative feedback of what specifically they want to see on the platform, helping us build a more uh, feature-rich, robust platform that adds value to your to your workflow, and ultimately is something you would want to pay for. Uh, where are we right now? We currently are uh, operating on any iOS device or working through Chrome, and we're working to expand to all the different web browsers, you know, Safari, Firefox, Opera, etc. And we currently have Android in development right now. So we invite you, if you're interested, if you go to anotree.com, you can sign up for our beta list. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'll be here sticking around for the next couple hours. So thank you. <laughs> questions, questions, questions. I have some questions. I'm sure other people do too. Yeah, uh, so typically, um, who are the people um, who are using this app? Is it all people inside of one company? Or are there different people who are doing the development or doing the designing or doing the testing of the mobile app? Well, ideally, anyone who works for any company can use this, uh, can use our platform. Because even if they're not a developer, as I said, they can still you know, whip out their device and start marking up these annotations. So. Um, individual users will have accounts, and you know, if I work for University of Michigan and I work for Apple, I would have different forests, which actually, if I go back to that slide right here, each forest represents a company that you're working with. So if I'm working with multiple different companies, I can have, again, the, the, the trees, which are the different applications within different companies. So even if you have multiple roles, you can still use the platform for uh, any of these roles. Okay, so then the, the, the person who's, who's paying for this or buying this or getting it to infect the organization is the is like the designer who does like freelance mobile development or is the, the person who owns the app who's selling everyone who collaborates with them to use well, it? Well, usually it's, it's kind of the, whoever would be the decision maker in the company who's going to make the decision to go with Antri and implement that for their team. So I mean, it, it could be team level, it could be company level, depending on you know, whatever the, the, the customers are looking for. Okay, really cool. Yep. Oh, who's your competition? Uh, well, you have to kind of look at it at different segments because, in a sense, it's a project management system. So you have, you know, your base camp, different products like that. Uh, and there's also a company called, I know there's Instabug that allows you to draw directly on the application. So they have similar features like that, but they don't have the backbone of the collaboration platform. Uh, so, I mean, if you look at it in the different parts, there are going to be different competitors that are going to be uh, going against us. But the whole platform that we have here with the, uh, the drawing on the application paired together with the collaboration, there aren't really any people out there doing that specific thing. Yeah. The back. Can you tie it to Jira or GitHub and actually publish tickets? Uh, yeah, right now that's uh, one, of the things, uh, one of the thousands of things we have down the pipeline for, uh, for development is Jira integration has been one of the loudest voices that we've heard from people who, have, uh, who are using the uh, platform right now. So, uh, I mean, hopefully in the next couple months, you know, it's hard to put a timetable on these things, but that is something that, we, uh, that we're exploring. So. Yeah. How does it work on iOS? Do you have to take screenshots before you can start annotating things? Uh, Talking about like if I have like my, my phone here? Yeah. I mean, I, I can actually show you afterwards, but uh, it, there's a widget, it's a little toolbar you can install directly into your app. And once you install that, you can begin just instantly drawing on that. And you have to, there's an API key that you have to set up uh, through your platform that kind of syncs up the platform with your device. But once you've gone ahead and done that, then you can start drawing it automatically, start populating it into your, into your trees. Does that answer your question? Or? Yeah. What's your pricing strategy? Uh, right now we're doing uh, uh, SaaS, so um, it's, you know the users are going to be paying. We're still it's one thing that we're still looking into is how what specifically the breakdown is going to be, uh, but it's going to be you know either per user or per kind of grouping of users. So we plan to have like a kind of a perpetual free version, uh, and then there's also going to be versions depending on the number of users that you have uh, on your development team. One time access, monthly charge, annual charge. Uh, monthly charge, sorry, yeah, monthly. Am I missing hands? Yeah. I guess maybe I just, but are you, is it apps that are, like, I'm a tester, so is, are these apps that are, like, somehow sideloaded onto your phone for the most part? Like, are they already in the app store? Uh, no, it's the application that you know, if you're working through, you know, you're, you've got it coding on your Mac or whatever, and you can run a, a, a version onto your phone, you can send it from, you know, Xcode or whatever, and you just have to put that code into the code. So as long as it can be any stage of the development. It could be any stage, it could be, you know, Hello World. And you know you could you could throw stuff in there and if, if that could work, you know. So. Well, so I think maybe that part was missing. This from my understanding, you, if this is not a separate app that runs on your mm -hmm. phone. The, your library actually gets compiled into the the test app, which allows you to. to yeah, yeah. To, to clarify, then, yeah. So you take a line of code, you put it into your code, and then you have to run it onto your device. And then once you've done that, you have a version, a test version of your device on your your phone, your your whatever. Uh, and then that's where you're going to be doing the annotations. Interesting. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does this app uh, help you recruit these uh, testers and developers, etc.? And can you vet them? I don't. Can you clarify? Um, is this uh, 
you know, an alternative to a, a job site, you can go to this uh, app and search for a project you want to work on, and if so, can it test to see how good you are? I mean, that's not really the scope of our product. The idea behind our product is that existing development teams or companies can use this within their company. It's not really meant. I'm not saying it couldn't be 10, 20 years down the line, I couldn't tell you, but for now, that's not really our focus. It seems like this would be really useful for anyone who is collaborating on a, a visual design, but I guess the, the trick is figuring out how, if you're working on a web page or if you're working on some other visual design, how to incorporate this ability to annotate like live in it without you know taking a screenshot and in Photoshop. Yeah, 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 I mean a lot of it is you know we're right now the, the best. I know I have like three seconds. I'll try to make this really quick. But the uh, the kind of our, our main target is companies that are working you know from halfway across the globe. They're gonna get the most value out of it. But even smaller teams that might be just be you know doing design. Uh, you know, kind of down the hall, they can still find value. Right? So. Cool, thank you. Thank you. Okay, and then I know that I cut off at least one or two people who still had announcements. There's a bunch of tech events I wanted to mention. Maybe, oh, yes. Hi, uh, my name is Pei. I'm working on a very cool project. I'm, I'm looking for cool people to work with me. So, uh, <laughs> Feel free to drop by, I can do a live demo to you. I assure you it's very interesting. Zach saw it. Did you say it? Yes, I did. It was very interesting. So you, should, you should say like at least a little something more about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's about a shape recognition. So it's like, um, I saw the, 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 the uh, slide, the, uh, that previous project. If you like, just want to draw a shape on the task screen, you want it to be a, probably a perfect shape, like a perfect circle, perfect line, perfect rectangle, and uh, my so project can do that. Yeah, you take hand Recognize stations. the shape and uh, have it beautify automatically. Awesome. And I thought there was one other, yeah. Um, I'm just starting a project which is, it helps students find the job that they like, and it also, like 50% of the working population do not like their job. So I think I have a solution to it, but <laughs> and I know this sounds kind of radical, but um, like I need to make a minimum viable product to pitch to angel investors, and if anyone's interested, I need, I need help. Yeah, it's quite the idea. I love it. And I thought there was one other person, but not. Oh, yes, Walker. Uh, just to remind people, uh, when you have something like this, post it as a comment on this event. Because people will say, somebody said something about this. If you post it there with your contact information and what it was, people can get, get back to it. Yeah, especially the link or an email address or something. Plus, we have a record then of how many jobs are available. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Emily Hay asked me to announce that a woman uh, 2.0 uh, hosts uh, Founder Friday Detroit. And they're looking for any local uh, angels or VCs who would be willing to uh, impart their knowledge onto their uh, Woman 2.0 Founder Friday Detroit. Uh, and then also there's a whole bunch of tech events I want to quickly mention. Uh, September 8th, the Ann Arbor Downtown Library is having an Oculus Rift demo day. That's the crazy like 3D goggles you strap to your face. That's uh, September 8th, so you can check that out on their website. Uh, and then also September 20th, MHAX is coming to the Big House. Has anyone heard of this yet? Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a giant student hackathon in the Big House on September 20th. Uh, if you are at all involved in the Ann Arbor development scene, you do not want to miss this event. Uh, and then, uh, additionally, uh, Nancy Shaw has started something called the uh, Creators Co-op. Uh, it's supposed to be a place for students who are interested in entrepreneurship to sort of meet and exchange ideas. Um, I wish I knew more about it. I think they're having an open house in early September. Uh, so if you're looking for more information, I would either contact Nancy or search for uh, Creators Co-op is the, is the name of it. Uh, okay, and then uh, without further ado, uh, Scott, take it away. Great, thanks. Uh, my name is Scott Phillips, and uh, I'm founder of the Searchlight. I appreciate Zach squeezing me in kind of last minute here tonight. Um, you'll see that my software startup is quite at a different stage than some of the others tonight. Um, my CTO, I'll hear Len Chockley raise your hand. So Len, if you have questions about my tech stack or any of that, uh, see Len afterwards. I've been told it's a lamp. But I don't really know what a lamp is. But my software idea is for startup companies, tech startup companies, whether they're software or uh, any any science or solution that's kind of looking for a problem. So what it is is it's kind of rapid discovery using wisdom of the crowd access to people beyond what you might normally do if you're part of a startup project. So what it does is it helps you discover, evaluate, and test customer segment fit for your startup. And my claim is I think we can do it in 30 days and get you a better start. Anybody in here, how many people familiar with uh, Steve Blank and kind of the customer discovery process? Good. Good. 
So, um, probably bad news for me and my colleagues tonight. I don't know which of us will be the one in 10 that, that succeeds, but we've, you've probably seen some of these statistics. So, 20% of entrepreneurs who are doing their second startup um, are successful. For those of us doing our first, it's about 10%. But uh, what I hope to do is be able to improve the odds um, for those people. And the question is, what's the failure modes that are happening? And so there's a lot of information about this. I, I kind of triangulated some, and it's, it's no big secret. It's really the customer discovery. You know, there's funding, you have issues with funding and partnership and, and things like that, and technology and invention. But usually it's just ignoring customers and under, or not finding the market need, which I know is not a surprise to people, but it's a surprise that there haven't been uh, better solutions, I think, to some degree. So the needs and desires people have, if you're familiar with Steve Blank and, and maybe Alec Osterwalder and the business model generation in that language is that you have to have a diverse group. And so often we're sitting there as a tech startup with just our immediate crowd, maybe our team, uh, some mentors if we're part of a startup program or something, some coaches. But it's too narrow. And, and so often there's not enough diversity thinking of what our new business model should be. And uh, even customer discovery process says that you should draw your first canvas about your hypothesis of who your customer is inside before you go out of the building and start looking. And so I, I come from a consulting background where we work with large companies on technology exploration. We find that if you start with a broader vision, kind of input from wisdom of the crowds, it's a better start. And, and what the startup community would say, Steve Blank, is that you've got to be flexible and ready to pivot as you're trying to find your customer segment. But I would argue that while pivoting is good and you should be flexible, less pivots are better than more pivots because it's uh, less money, less time, and less frustration. So the question is, how do we have a better start? And so Wisdom of the Crowds, about eight years ago, a couple of different uh, phenomena started hitting. Uh, James Sirwicky wrote Wisdom of the Crowds and the knowledge that you can get from collective wisdom. Henry Chesbro kind of authored Open Innovation. A lot of big companies started using software platforms called Seeker Solver. And this is an open innovation platform, usually for technology risk, where you assign a challenge, a bounded challenge, and you put it out there with a bounty or a reward uh, for scientists to collaborate and, um, and go after the reward on. And so my claim is that I think we can bring this type of tool and software down to a very small, fast, lightweight system that would be good for startup entrepreneurs as well. And so what startup entrepreneurs are trying to do is, is answer six critical, critical building blocks, the gains and pains and customer jobs. That's the customer segment fit. But they have to be clear that they have gain creators, pain relievers, or products and solutions that answer those things. And when you have a good match, you have product market fit, your odds go up and your pivots go down. You get to market quicker. Anybody in here using Digo as a bookmarking tool by chance? No Digo users. So Delicious, probably some other bookmarking tools people use. Digo's been around, and it's kind of evolved from just a social bookmarking to a collaborative research tool. And what we found in some work that I do is it's really structured well in that the tagging schemes and annotation schemes can match up very nicely with the customer fit business model. And so what this allows you to do is gives you quick, easy access to wisdom of the crowds, putting out a challenge through a seeker solver software platform and really engaging people from all over the world, entrepreneurs, you know, college students, people with subject matter knowledge that can bring in, uh, submit canvases that can be mapped and uh, evaluated by you for solution. Um, the tool also will do evaluation, so it does quick visualization. And you can again tap in the wisdom of the crowd experts to evaluate the different uh, business model fit canvases. Um, what the tool will do is give you access to how the evaluators voted, what the annotation and research was by the field scout, where they're from, and kind of how it fits into your canvas. Um, it'll also help you with the hypothesis, making sure that when you do go out to start testing your hypothesis that they're written well and you know where to test first. Uh, my ask here tonight is, um, I, as you can see, I need a lot of technical help. So I need some general feedback. I need some coaching on LAMP software development. I think I'm a LAMP, but... I'm not sure. I do need some subject matter expertise on computer learning, NLP, and computer sort of, uh, supported work systems, if anybody has that. And ultimately, I need a tech partner, somebody that uh, would be willing to spend a couple days this fall either to go through two programs with me. One is Michigan iCorps, which is funded by uh, NSF, and the other is Sparks Boot Camp. But in both cases, I, I'm the entrepreneur side. I need a tech partner. But that's just mostly for somebody who might be interested in learning the startup skills themselves as well. Thank you. That's it. Hope oh, I didn't talk over your head there. I guess I had a question maybe to kick it yeah. off with. Yeah, okay, so um, what's the saying? Uh, when it comes to breakfast, uh, the chicken is involved with the pig is committed. 
that were baking eggs. Yeah. So how do you? So you talked a lot about using the wisdom of the crowds to help prove out your business model. How do you make sure that the people you're getting feedback from, like, I don't know, they're sort of like putting their money where their mouth is, and they aren't just saying sort of whatever comes to mind and that sort of thing? You mean as far as the solvers that are solving your product market fit? Yeah, I mean, if they're, well, so my understanding is that you ask people, hey, would you buy this? And they're like, yes or no. No, no, that's oh, not, okay. no, no. What people are doing is people are using a bookmarking tool to actually submit solution sets against your challenge. Your challenge is you're trying to solve your product market fit. So you're describing for the world what your um, current situation and intent is. Here's my company, this is what we do, this is the problems we think we can solve, these are our technical capabilities. And then you, a bounded challenge means you spell out the criteria for a winning entry and if there's any reward or inducement. And, they, and those, those people are trying to find examples of companies that do they're looking, what, you're, what you're saying? They're looking or? at the technical effects that you say you can create, so it's really agnostic as to um, where customers are. As long as they know what technical effects your solution can do, they'll go find pains and gains and things that you might not have thought of to look. Mm -hmm. So that when you go out and start looking, your odds of hitting your best uh, customer segment or product market fit are raised. Because when you leave the building to get out of the building and start, you know where to look first, what domains to look in. Okay, so if my if my imaginary company is making uh, laser cut board games, they would yep. go and find blogs where people are like, man, I wish I could buy a laser cut board games. And they'd be like, here, you need to talk to these people. Good, that could be. Usually what it is, it's a, it could be a professor in a university that's got a, a, a research project and they've had some research that's been hunting for a solution or a customer or a problem or a customer. That's more likely the case of a, a, some sort of a science or technology that's looking for a problem out there to solve. Okay, really interesting. Um, is there a risk of uh, your users finding out, uh, well, let's, let's say your secrets, your, your key factors that you've uh, figured out for yourself or found in the marketplace and don't want others to know? Yeah, well, it's, so there's technical risk and market risk, and this tool is really more for market risk. So the technology has probably either been patented or protected or it's been long in the research. You're, you're willing to withhold as much as you want to withhold, but the more you put in your bounded challenge, the more likely you're going to get good hits on, on customer segments. And do you have a picture of one of these challenges? Um, if the best example I could give, if you just want to see kind of the big enterprise solutions, if you're familiar with systems like Innocentive, Nine Sigma, or uh, Spigot, these are the ones that the great big technology companies are enterprise level software. If you want to see an example of this kind of at a startup level, Idea Ken. Idea K E N is a little tool that does secret solver models. What's your uh, business model? How are you planning? Yeah, so the idea here is that any university programs or startup programs like iCorps or boot camps or accelerators can use it for free as long as they're self-contained. Uh, they have their own seekers and solvers in their group. If they want access to the wisdom of the crowd group and they want to run reward programs or reward challenge, they pay a subscription and on down the road. Uh, and usually there's also a facilitation fee anytime there's a reward involved. Okay. Right? Are you planning on hooking into any of these uh, systems where you can have people do a uh, task for a very amount of money, like Amazon Mechanical Turk or Odesk? This is, or? This is like TaskRabbit or Mechanical Turk, but for a very narrow, specific purpose and the very specific challenges, startups looking for their customer segment fit. Okay. So it is, it is like TaskRabbit or Mechanical Turk. Did you use this to create itself? <laughs> yes. I actually have a website. I, I know WordPress, and that's all I know. And I actually have an open source web price, uh, website called thesearchlight.com, L-I-T-E. And I'm just kind of open sourcing the business model and asking for anybody to weigh in with these kind of questions. So I'm trying to eat my own dog food. I think there's a Lance question over yes. on the side. Is this better suited for a B2B or B2C? Um, it, it's more common to see it in B2B, but it, it could because because often if it's science looking for a, a, a problem to solve, it's B2B, but it could be either. Okay, good, awesome. thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, that concludes uh, ancient new tech. Uh, as we said previously, uh, please, please feel free to stick around. And where is Kyle Mulka? Kyle Mulka, are we? Uh, is there any sort of ancient new tech after party going on? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Well, you guys can have one, but I'm just not going. <laughs> I am. Uh, yeah. Probably in about half an hour or so, uh, some of us are probably going to head over to Pizza House for some uh, after HQ Tech uh, pizza beer and shakes. Thanks, you guys. Hey.